But my next guest remains bullish. His bear case for Brent is 125, and he says the setup for the broader commodities complex is the most bullish since the 2020 super cycle began, even though oil prices collapsed spectacularly in the back half of last year. Joining me now is Jeffrey Curry, global head of commodities research at Goldman Sachs. It's great to see you again, Jeff. Welcome. Great. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. So where are we on the pension fund barometer of them taking your call versus not taking it these days? They're not taking it. People just do <laughs> not believe the story. And, you know, I, and I think that, that, that that's important here because people think it's over with. They do not believe in the persistency of it. I think it's important to go back and go, what caused the sell-off in the second half of last year? One, Russian disruptions did not materialize. Two, um, you had rolling lockdowns in China um, due to the COVID. And then three, you had 325 basis points of rate hikes and a strong dollar in the second half of yeah. the year. You put all three of those together, that created 30% sell-off. And by the way, you pointed out energy was up 60% last year. Commodities more broadly were up 26%. But that's why people don't believe in the story. So you're probably going to ask, what's changed? Everything is changing. Let's start with Russia. You're starting to see evidence of the sanctions beginning to bite. Um, where we've seen exports out of Russia beginning to roll over recently. And when the product um, you know, restrictions occur in February, that's going to get larger. Second, we look at China. You're seeing a rebound in mobility, um, bookings for uh, holidays, um, subway ridership. All of it's beginning to show a, a, a rebound. Then we look at Europe. PMIs rebounding, gas prices off, Indian PMIs rebounding. So the overall picture out there sequentially looks much better. And I'm not going to belabor the supply story. I've come on here and made those supply arguments before. And you know, before what we need is sequential demand growth, and we're seeing evidence of it. So I thought you had the best kind of illustration of anybody out there when the Fed stimulus and global stimulus really hit to explain why we were seeing this massive inflation. And your point was, you know, we're, we're putting dollars into the hands of consumers who are going to buy tons and tons of things. And this isn't, you know, when you just hand it to the wealthy and they buy stocks and asset prices go up. You know, this is, like you said, I think we, said we were running out of microorganisms. There was some, some way you had of phrasing it that was so apt. And I wonder if, if what happened was the Fed heard you and said, you're right, and we need to slam the brakes on this because we're going to literally see shortages of everything everywhere, and now they're running that script in reverse. I mean, that's a pretty powerful thing to fight, and it doesn't look like that tightening impulse is going away. Absolutely. I think you, you said it perfectly. You know, I, I, another way to say it is, what is inflation? Too much money chasing too few goods. What happened at the end of last year? Well, we still had too few goods, but we didn't have too much money. Um, you know, the best way to just to, to color how significant was, you take the yen before this recent BOJ action. You know, we started last year at 100. It went to 150. That means there was 50 percent fewer dollars to chase oil and uh, broader commodities. And so that's precisely what happened in the second half of last year is the money supply that could chase these commodities was dramatically reduced. Exactly. And we see the charts now. The money supply is falling off a cliff. It's going way in reverse. So I feel like, why would I want to exposure to commodities until that story ends? It kind of is what our opening guest said. You know, until the Fed starts to allow some kind of expansion uh, on the balance sheet or a loosening of financial conditions, it feels like commodities should be under pressure. All you need is for it to stop and abate. You don't need it for it to actually reverse. You know, mm -hmm. you go back to what happened after the rate hikes in, you know, 04 through 06. You know, by 07, you ended up having a massive rally in commodities because of two things. The, the Fed stopped hiking and you had stimulus out of China. What do we potentially have in 2023 is, hey, you know, terminal rates. And I don't want to get the argument of where that terminal is, but right. they're likely to slow down and they're likely to hit something called, you know, something akin to a terminal at the same time. And here's the key point. China. Largest commodity consumer in the world, largest oil importer in the world, second largest economy in the world, starts to stimulate, rebound, reopen. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the goods markets.